I'm here in Newport News, Virginia. It's 24 degrees outside the day after Christmas and Black Buffalo teamed up with Alquist 3D to get these two homes printed behind me. You can see the printer right here. They've dismantled it after completing the project and the two homes they've printed are very high quality, much higher quality than the two Alquist had printed in the past and even nicer than some of the other Black Buffalo prints we've seen. Let's see if we can figure out which one they printed first. They're approaching the quality that companies like Icon are achieving. They do seem to be running into some challenges though. Not everything looks the way it should be. Granted, around the holidays, they might have left in a rush because they're excited to go spend Christmas or whatever holiday they celebrate with their families. So we look over here, so far so good. But you see the whole printer's been taken apart, ready for transport. They probably have some new project or uh, opportunity coming up. Unfortunately, if you look over to this side, you can see this track looks like it's uh, not how it's supposed to be at the very least. Perhaps it was knocked off during storage, but they've got this duct tape here. Hose management is one of the biggest problems on a 3D printed construction site. And this looks like part of their uh, either tread to move the printing system or something with the hose management system. There's a lot of cables in there. We'll notice over here, a lot of these cables got cut for some reason. So I don't know if those are extras they had to splice in, but there's a ton of tread and cables uh, sticking around. Back to the houses. These houses they printed are really spectacular. It's much higher than I believe the first home that Alquist printed. These are probably about nine foot ceilings. Similar to the other houses Alquist has done, they didn't print the interior walls, they only printed the exterior. And I think this is smart because it levels out the uh, amount of monotony in the building. So you don't have printed walls everywhere. It's only in the places you desire them. In this case, the exterior walls. They have giant windows and they really seem to have fine-tuned these corners around the openings. You'll recall in some of their older projects, it's pretty hard to get these sections right. This part of the wall, this whole big printer machine is moving and changing direction rigidly, rapidly. So during these acceleration changes, the printer can sometimes shake and it gets a little wobble. This seems like it got no wobble at all. It's just a great smooth edge. The string indicates where the floor level will ultimately be. And we can see at this stage, all of the gravel is being poured in above the plumbing. This is probably water outlets. Uh, the tall ones are inlets. And we have all the uh, boxes here. Interestingly, they seem to have prepared something custom sized, maybe during the print to be pushed in uh, with the outlet. That's really cool. This is concrete, it's been flattened and this fits really snug in there. Really clever solution. They have this insulatory baseboard all around the whole thing. We'll get the drone up and see what the top walls look like. These lentils are a solution we've seen used quite consistently. Uh, this one has two layers of metal and hangs about six inches over to the other side. And again, just great uh, window area. They got it real flat, so it's prepared to accept the custom size window, big windows everywhere. I gotta say guys, I'm a big fan of what you've done with the place since the first homes you printed in Virginia over a year ago. It's one thing to see how a group goes from their first house to their second house, but after taking time to really think about it, I know Alquist has talked with a lot of smart people and figured out a lot of things, seeing how much progress they've made and how quickly is really inspiring to see how fast the industry is progressing. And you know, it's not as fast as some people may have hoped overnight success, uh, one year, three years. I've been filming 3D printed houses for three years now, but I can certainly tell you in that three years, it has advanced tremendously and is certainly not stagnant. Before we step into the other house, I wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by the Automation Nation and my course, How to 3D Print a House. 
I just added two new sections to the course, including how to pick a printer, which includes a list of 97 printer manufacturers. Actually, there's 101 now. I got to go update that list. That list is also shared with the Automation Nation members who pay $10 a month for exclusive virtual tours of 3D printed houses along with the members only community forum. So check those things out to support the channel and let's go check out the inside of this house. If you look at the bottom layers of this house, they're a little bit sloppier than the bottom layers of this house, which are really, really consistent. I'm gonna say they printed this house second and this house first. I noticed this mark up here, which is some kind of scuff. It looks like they've uh, smoothed it a little bit with a tool. I don't know if it was the hose that hit it or something, but it's really interesting because it's mirrored exactly on the other side. Something also had the same effect right here, and it's in a very similar pattern. I wonder if it has something to do with the print file, the printer. It is on, uh, this would be the right of this house and the left of this house. Let's go around the back and see if it's on the other side. Nope, this side's clean. The inside of this house is at the same stage as the other house. The gravel is half in, they haven't poured the concrete yet, and the plumbing is rough end, I guess. Uh, so the string for some reason isn't up, but I think you get the picture. It's basically the same. I believe that with Alquist's experience, they probably achieved some cost savings from their initial projects with this project. I would have guessed their initial projects were probably 30 or 40% more expensive than traditional construction. With this project, they might have reached within the 20 to 40% range, uh, hopefully. I don't know about the cost of their material. It's uh, Black Buffalo's My Pay material, which is 509, AC509 certified. Uh, so all those certifications are an expensive process that could have increased the material prices, but it goes to show in the quality, uh, they got a really good finish on this material. And uh, I saw some great videos. There's this guy, uh, Craig Meadows. And Craig is a general contractor who's been working with this technology with Alquist since the very beginning. He has a great TikTok channel, C Meadows. And he had this tool that's shaped similarly to the layers so that if there's any kind of issue, you just smooth it over with the tool and it has these seams to match up the last layer seam and the one before it. When you do that, it makes it much harder to see where the issues are. I mean, something like this looks a lot less noticeable than some of the blobs that we see on other projects. Looking down there, we can see there's some type of insulation and some other concrete poured between the inner and outer layer. That's likely some type of uh, backfill. I wonder how far up the wall it continues. We can probably see if we... Take a little peek in here. Okay, cool. So it looks like the backfill goes up about the first foot of the wall and then doesn't continue. And then we've got this rebar reinforcement with electrical running through directly through the wall. That's pretty incredible, actually. Well, I really hope their printer was okay. I would have contacted Craig. He said he would meet me out here, but it's the day after Christmas and maybe he's spending the day with his family. I didn't want to bother him. So I'll stop by again and hopefully link it up with Craig towards the end of this project. And until then, I'll catch you on the next one.